Every single team out there has had their quarterback really pop off one season and put up some crazy numbers. It's unbelievable to think that he was throwing for 5,084 yards and 48 touchdowns in 1984. Which individual QB season stands out as the very best? Let us take a look back on the best quarterback season in every NFL team's history. Arizona Cardinals, Kurt Warner, 2008. The ex-St. Louis Rams legend turned back the clock and pieced together his best season in years for the Redbirds in 08. That year, Warner threw for 4,583 yards and 30 touchdowns, becoming the first Cardinal to hit the latter number in a season. Warner's magic continued over into the postseason as the Cinderella story Cardinals advanced all the way to Super Bowl 43. Their magic ran out with a heartbreaking last-minute loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, but it doesn't take away the fact that 08 was the best season in the franchise's rather sad history. Lance Falcons, Matt Ryan, 2016. This one is not up for debate. Ryan set Falcons franchise single season records across the board, a 69.9 completion percentage, 4,944 passing yards, and 38 touchdowns. Ryan cruised to MVP honors and led the Falcons to just their second Super Bowl appearance in franchise history, but Atlanta inexplicably blew a 28-3 lead to the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 51, losing a 34-28 heartbreaker in overtime. Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, 2019. This was the year where Jackson got the last laugh on those scouts who suggested that he make the switch to wide receiver. Not only did Jackson lead the league with 36 touchdown passes in 2019, but he set a single season record for rushing yards by QB with 1,206 to go along with seven rushing touchdowns. Jackson, who led Baltimore to an NFL best 14-2 record, also became the first Raven to win NFL MVP honors. Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, 2020. In most other years, Allen's 2020 season would have won him MVP, but Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes just had to outdo Allen this very year. Allen was a beast in year three as a pro, completing 69.2% of pass attempts for 4,544 yards and 37 touchdowns. All franchise single season records, Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton, 2015. Newton was on another level in 2015, throwing for 35 touchdowns against just 10 interceptions while racking up 636 rushing yards and 10 TDs. Carolina finished 15-1, the best mark in franchise history, and reached Super Bowl 50. Their dream season ended with a painful loss to the Denver Broncos in the big game, however. Chicago Bears, Sid Luckman, 1943. How's this for an individual season? NFL MVP, Pro Bowler, First Team All-Pro, League Leader in Passing Yards and Passing Touchdowns, and oh yeah, leading the Bears to the NFL Championship that same season. Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow, 2021. Recency bias? No, 2021 Joe Burrow was truly something else. You know, with a league best 70.4 completion percentage, 4,611 passing yards and 34 touchdowns against 14 interceptions. Oh, man, he led the Bengals to a surprise Super Bowl 56 appearance, where they nearly fell to the Los Angeles Rams. Cleveland Browns, Otto Graham, 1947. Graham led the Browns to NFL championships in 1950, 54, and 55, but statistically speaking, 1947 was the best of his career. Graham threw for 2,753 yards and 25 touchdowns, leading the Browns to a 12-1-1 record. Graham won 1947 AAFC MVP honors and led the Browns to an AAFC League championship over the New York Yankees. Dallas Cowboys, Roger Staubach, 1979. Statistically speaking, Staubach went out on a super high note. Staubach threw for 3,586 passing yards and 27 touchdowns, all personal bests. The Cowboys finished 11-5 on the year, but they fell to the Rams in the divisional round. Denver Broncos, Peyton Manning, 2013. This is unquestionably the best statistical season ever for any quarterback. The Sheriff captained a Denver offense that broke the single season record for points scored with 606. Manning threw for 55 touchdown passes and 5,477 passing yards, both NFL records. He cruised to a fifth career NFL MVP award, but like so many guys on this list, saw his season end in a whimper with a Super Bowl loss. Detroit Lions, Bobby Lane. Matthew Stafford's 2011 season also deserves consideration here, but Lane's stats in 1951 were simply more remarkable given that era. That year, Lane led the NFL in passing yards with 2,403 and in passing touchdowns with 26. That was the first to six career Pro Bowl nods for Lane, too. Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, 2011. After leading the Packers to a Super Bowl 45 championship, Rodgers came back with the best season of his illustrious career. A-Rod threw for 4,640. 
143 yards and 45 touchdowns against only six interceptions, putting up a passer rating of 122.5, which stands as a single season record to this day. The pack finished 15 and one, but were stunned by the New York Giants in the divisional round. 2011 would be the first of four MVP seasons for Rodgers. Houston Texans, Deshaun Watson, 2020. The Houston made the playoffs twice with Watson, but 2020 of all years marked his best statistical season when the Texans were only a four-win team. Yeah, go figure. Watson completed 70.2% of pass attempts for 4,823 yards and 33 touchdowns against only seven picks, all single season records. Indianapolis Colts, Peyton Manning, 2004. Before Tom Brady's legendary 07 season, Manning's 04 campaign was easily the best in NFL history. He threw for 49 touchdown passes, then a single season record, and captured the second of five MVP awards of his career. Sadly, the Colts season ended in a thud, an ugly 20-3 loss to the bitter rival New England Patriots in the division round. Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, 2022. Blake Bortles' 2015 season deserves mention, but that Jaguars team was awful, and thus he got to pad his stats in garbage time. Bortles first to go up to six. What a catch by Clay Hubbard. Trevor Lawrence, on the other hand, brought new life to a once-broken franchise with a phenomenal sophomore season in 2022. He completed a franchise single-season record 66.3% of his passes for 25 touchdowns and just 8 interceptions. Lawrence and the Jaguars caught fire in the second half and stole the AFC South Division crown under the Tennessee Titans' noses. They erased a 27-0 deficit against the Los Angeles Chargers in the wildcard round, winning just their third playoff game since 2008. Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, 2022. Is this really up for debate? All Mahomes did was lead the league in passing yards and passing touchdowns with 5,250 and 41 respectively. Oh, and he won MVP honors and Super Bowl 57. And Super Bowl 57 MVP. Las Vegas Raiders, Rich Gannon, 2002. No, it wasn't one of the Raiders' three Super Bowl championship seasons, but it's hard to ignore the incredible season Gannon had in 2002. He won the MVP award after throwing for 4,689 yards, then a Raiders single season record, and 26 touchdowns. Gannon helped the Raiders to a Super Bowl 37 appearance, but they stood no chance against John Gruden in that Tampa defense that walloped them in the big game. Los Angeles Chargers, Justin Herbert, 2021. Phillip Rivers and Dan Fouts both had several incredible seasons that also were in consideration. But ultimately, we found it hard to go against Herbert's impressive sophomore year. His 443 completions were a franchise record until Herbert broke it in 2022. His 5,014 passing yards and 38 touchdowns were also record breakers. Incredibly, Herbert's MVP caliber year wasn't even enough for the Chargers to make the playoffs. Los Angeles Rams, Kurt Warner, 1999. No doubt about this one, Warner won the MVP award after throwing for 4,353 yards and 41 touchdowns. His incredible underdog story was completed when the Rams defeated the Tennessee Titans 23-16 in Super Bowl 34. Miami Dolphins, Dan Marino, 1984. He really rewrote the record book that year. Marino threw for 5,084 yards, a record that lasted until 2011, and 48 touchdowns. He was named the MVP and led Miami to a Super Bowl appearance, but they were crushed by Joe Montana's San Francisco 49ers. Minnesota Vikings, Randall Cunningham, 1998. Cunningham and Hall of Famers Chris Carter and Randy Moss, then a rookie, teamed up to form the NFL's greatest offense ever seen at the time. The 98 Vikings scored 556 points, a single season record until the 2007 Patriots smashed it. Cunningham threw for 3,704 yards and 34 touchdowns against only 10 picks. New England Patriots, Tom Brady, 2007. Was there ever a debate? 50 passing touchdowns, which set an NFL record. 23 of them went to Randy Moss, a single season receiving TD record. And the Pats scored 589 points, a record that stood for six whole years. The Patriots won their first 18 games, but fell just short of perfection, falling to the underdog New York Giants in Super Bowl 42. New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees, 2011. If Aaron Rodgers didn't have a historically great season, Brees would have won MVP honors this year. Brees completed 71.2% of his pass attempts for 5,476 yards, then a single season record, and 46 touchdowns against 14 picks. New York Giants, Y.A. Tittle, 1963. The only Manning's 2011 season deserves recognition, but Y.A. Tittle's 1963 season was in its own class among Giants lore. He won MVP honors after 
after completing 60.2% of pass attempts for 3,145 yards and 36 touchdowns. The Giants went all the way to the NFL Championship game, though they fell to the Bears 14-10. New York Jets Joe Namath, 1968 It's not just because Namath is the only QB to lead the Jets to a Super Bowl championship. He won AFL MVP honors in 1968 and led the Jets to a stunning Super Bowl III victory over the Baltimore Colts. Philadelphia Eagles, Donovan McNabb, 2004. McNabb put together an MVP season of his own, completing 64.0% of pass attempts for 3,875 yards and 31 touchdowns against eight interceptions, to go along with 220 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. Eagles went all the way to Super Bowl 39, where they fell to the Dynastic Patriots 24-21. Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw, 1979. In 79, Bradshaw threw for career-high 3,724 passing yards and 26 touchdowns. Those numbers were ultra impressive in the 70s, and Bradshaw polished it off by leading the Steelers to a fourth Super Bowl championship. San Francisco 49ers, Steve Young, 1994. This was the year where Young finally got the monkey off his back. He won the MVP award after completing 70.3% of pass attempts for 3,969 yards and 35 touchdowns against only 10 picks. Young also had seven rushing TDs, a personal best, and led San Fran to an easy Super Bowl 39 championship victory over the San Diego Chargers. Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson, 2020. You may recall that Wilson was the MVP front runner at the half waypoint of the 2020 season. The Hawks were letting Russ cook early and often, and it led to him throwing a franchise single-season record 40 touchdown passes. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady, 2020. This wasn't Brady's best statistical season, but hey, so what? We're not looking at players, we're looking at teams. 4,633 passing yards and 40 touchdowns kind of speaks for itself. Oh, and 43-year-old uh, Tom Brady led the Bucs to a Super Bowl 55 championship in his first season with the franchise. If that's not the best single season performance by a Bucks QB, then what is? Tennessee Titans, George Blanda, 1961. Blanda led the AFL in passing yards and passing touchdowns in 1961 with 3,330 and 36 respectively. He also won the MVP award and led the Houston Oilers, now the Tennessee Titans, to an AFL championship victory over the Chargers. Washington Commanders, Joe Theismann, 1983. The 83 Washington squad is widely regarded as one of the best NFL teams that did not win the Super Bowl. Let's just say that Theismann did his part. Theismann won the 83 MVP and Offensive Player of the Year awards after throwing for 3,714 yards and 29 touchdowns. The Super Bowl winning MVP ran out of magic in the Super Bowl, however, as Washington was crushed by the Raiders in the Super Bowl. But what do you think was the best QB single season in NFL history? Let us know in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.